to video five of Getting Started Fast in Pro Tools. I'm Graham Cochran from TheRecordingRevolution.com. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video so far. In the last video, I tried to fill out the song a little bit more. I'm a hack of a keyboard player, so I've got to clean up my performance a little bit. And I'm going to show you how to use some editing tools with both MIDI and audio inside of Pro Tools so you can get the performance just the way you want before it comes time to mix. All right, we're back in our session that we're building up, and it's getting closer. We've got more instruments in here, but there's a couple things that need to be tightened up and adjusted before we can really pull this song together. If you watched the last video, you saw how bad my organ part performance was. I'll admit, I'm not a keyboard player. The good thing is Pro Tools can help us fix just about anything. Let's take a listen to where we're at on the chorus when the organ comes in. Majesty, lift up your couple of sloppy notes, some bad timing, we can fix that. Anytime you need to adjust a MIDI performance, just simply double click the clip of MIDI and it opens up the MIDI editor right wherever you need it. And here's a detailed view of my MIDI performance. So a couple of things I notice here are the bad notes. I'm going to simply select and delete this note, select it, delete it. That's where my finger slipped. And then, of course, you can see where I'm a little pushing the beat and rushing. Now, I could simply grab each note, lock it in place to the grid if I wanted to. Or an even simpler way, close out of this window, is to use real-time MIDI properties, which is a great way to test out and see if you can tighten it up without having to do some heavy editing. In your edit window, if you can't see the real-time properties, go up to the drop-down here, choose real-time properties. And you'll see a couple of buttons here. It shows up only on instrument tracks. And the QUA is what we want, quantize. I'm going to click that. And that enables real-time quantize set to whatever you want here. In this case, eighth note or quarter note is fine. Quarter note would be nice and easy because I'm not doing anything fast. And a little T has popped up on this clip saying that real-time properties, something has happened to affect this clip. So even though the MIDI still looks the same, if I double click it, it's still all over the place. It's still it's still rushing. Take a listen to the performance now. Majesty, lift up your hands, Much, much better. Nice in time, nice in tune, stray notes are gone, we're done. And the great thing about real-time properties is you can change it after the fact or I can take it off entirely if I want to go back to the original. Now while we're talking about MIDI, one thing that I've been thinking about as I'm working on the song is the original drum sound that came with this template isn't really the best fit for this song for me. Now I've adjusted the kick drum pattern a little bit, but there's a couple things I want to adjust here to make the drums fit more of what I'm doing now with the guitars that I've laid down. First thing I'm going to do is open up a new instrument track. I'm going to do that by holding Command, Shift, and N. And then I'm going to choose Stereo, Instrument Track. So I have a brand new instrument track here. I'm going to double click this and call it Drums 2. So what I want to do is experiment with a new drum sound. I'm going to show you a really easy way to do this. I'm going to simply instantiate a new virtual instrument, expand to, and expand, like I said in the very beginning, can be any instrument you want. It's one of my favorite for drums. I'm going to come up and choose the drums category. I'm going to choose rock kit. But there's still no MIDI inside of this instrument track. So all I want to do is simply grab the MIDI performance from our original drums and hold Option or Alt and click and drag a copy of that clip down. I'm going to solo the drums 2 track. Now we can take a listen to what these drums sound like through a different instrument. Same pattern as if before, just different instrument.
So what I'd like to do is use this and build off of it. Double click. And here's the same pattern. With this patch, I'm going to simply select all the ride symbols and move them to a different ride symbol patch. More of the bell sound on the ride. Close out of that. Click it. Command D to duplicate. I'm also going to double click this first one now and add a crash hit. Hold Option and click to create a copy of this MIDI note. Here we go. What I might do is select it. And it's a little loud, so I'm going to come down here to the velocity and just turn that crash symbol down a bit. Now we can take a listen. Now let's mute our original drums and take a listen to the chorus with this new drums and see if it's working better. like that sound better, I think we're at a good spot to continue to move on with those drums. All right, so I'm building out the drums a little bit more with a MIDI editor. And as I'm working on that, I notice a couple of spots where maybe my bass guitar could be tightened up to the drums now that I've kind of tweaked the drum pattern a little bit. And a great way to edit audio is to use elastic audio. It's so easy to use, but it can be a little bit mysterious if you've never really played around with it. What you want to do is kind of like the real-time properties affected MIDI, Elastic Audio Effects Audio Tracks. I'm going to look at my bass track here. Over on the left, there's a blank slot here. If you click that, you see that we've got none. We've disabled Elastic Audio. That's the Elastic Audio plugin. What I want to do is select what kind of source I have. Polyphonic would be a source that has many notes at once. Think like a guitar or a piano. You're playing chords. Rhythmic would be for rhythm instruments like drums a lot of times, percussion. A monophonic is great for things that are a single note, a vocalist who's singing, or in this case, a bass guitar. It's playing one note at a time. I'm going to choose monophonic. My track goes gray, goes offline for a minute while it analyzes the audio. It's back online. Now I'm ready to do any kind of processing I want to do. Now, two ways to do this. We can do this manually under the hood, or we can do this with automation. If I were to select, let's say, this part of the audio, I'm going to change my grid to eighth notes. I'm going to click right before this downbeat, and I'm going to make sure that this button, tab to transient, is engaged. So when I use the tab key on my keyboard, it will always move the cursor to the immediate downbeat of a hit. I'm going to zoom in here so you can see what's happening. Tab, tab, tab. Now I know that my cursor is right at the beginning of this waveform. Okay, so I won't be cutting any of that off. I'm going to hit the B key to break or put a slice in my audio there. And then I'm going to come over here and simply put another break in the audio here so that this part of the bass guitar is what I want to select. With one word. Now that I have it selected, I can easily quantize by hitting Option and then Zero. That opens up the Quantize menu. And I can say, how do I want to quantize this audio? It's already been analyzed, so I can make this eighth notes, one and. And if I want to, I can just click apply. Now, of course, I could hit strength and go instead of 100%, I could go down to, let's say, 80%, click apply. And if you were paying attention, you could see that all my notes kind of snapped into place a little bit more.
nice and tight. If I undo it, you can see the waveforms kind of slide back out of place. I'll click undo. There we go. Redo. It's a simple way to snap your audio in place. Now, let's undo that. If you wanted to do this manually, once you've selected uh, and analyzed your audio with the Elastic Audio plugin, over here in the track window, instead of looking at the waveform view, now we have another option, which is the warp view. Okay, the warp view is now the view where we can warp the audio or stretch it to where we need it to be. So this is where you could zoom in and manually move notes around. You simply do that by coming over, double clicking to make the warp marker active, and you can shift things around. Now that's not very helpful if it's shifting the whole audio clip around. So really the way warp markers best work is if you have boundaries on either side of them. If I want to adjust this one note, let's say, because it's a little ahead of the grid here, I can hold shift and click. And what that does is give me a warp marker on this note and then a warp marker on the previous note. So if I grab this, I can slide this in and out all I want and it does not affect anything on either side of it. This allows me to, in slip mode, simply just drag this to where I want it to be. Or if I'm in grid mode, just click and drag. It'll snap it to the grid. Same thing with this note, it's a little ahead of the grid. So I could go ahead and just put a, a marker here by double clicking. So I have a boundary on the right side and now I can grab this and snap it to the grid. And we can move on down the line. Two ways to edit audio seamlessly inside of Pro Tools, either with a simple quantize where you don't have to mess with it, or if you really want to dig in deep, you can go ahead and do that. Flip back to the waveform view and you don't have to see any of that processing that's been done. And the great thing about this is you can undo it, of course, at any point by selecting any of the warp markers that you played with, clicking delete. And then now everything slides back to where it was. Now, of course, you can do all of this manually by simply using that tab to transient that I showed you earlier. Coming up to the hit, selecting the area you want to grab, clicking the B key to break it, and sliding notes around to the grid individually. You could zoom up here, tab to transient on this bass note, hit B, tab to transient on that one, B, and make sure I slide this to the grid a little bit tighter. You can always drag back any audio you ever cover up. And if it's not sounding right, you can move your cursor down here if you're using the Smart tool, which is all three of these tools engaged here by simply clicking the button above all three. Then that makes it the Smart tool and it automatically wants to give you a crossfade. And if you're in slip mode over here, which is free mode, so you don't have to be in the grid, you can click and create the size of the crossfade you want. So you have nice and smooth performance. Old fashioned, but it works like a charm. Now I'm going to finish tightening up a few more of my tracks here, make sure the drums are kind of where I want them. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how you can simply get to mixing in Pro Tools fast, how to use a workflow, how to insert plugins, use sends and group tracks, all that good stuff and unlock the power of Pro Tools.